Boys and girls, hey, yeah, that's what have. <laughs> so, we're going to this We are back. The name of the show is called The Highest Frequency. Mm-hmm. For a reason, by the way. Hey, these days, man, ish. I want to tanda impilo with everyone that's on this show. Because I want us to vibrate at the highest frequency. And my guest today, hey, Buffett. And you know, by the way, part of my job is to open up the industry. And I feel like today I'm contributing towards that frequency. You know, I want to open up the industry because I got a legend. For me, he's already a legend. He's a producer. He's an artist. He's my brother. I call him my, he's my brother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, on the show today, I got Dumelo Tandogu Shematebula, a.k.a. Cheesy! What's going on, sir? I'm fun now. The way I'm so excited to have you today on my show. Mm. I'm so excited, dog. Ukren. I'm Nandi dog, you know? I'm super dog. Thank you for pulling up. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Anytime, you know. Dalang Octane, I'm fun. Let's keep fine. Hey, you know, industry things. Oh, uh, yeah? You know, trying to open it up, trying to contribute in Jay. Of course, of course. You've you you have always been contributing, dog. Yeah. Yeah, but now today I invited you to this show, dog, because you know I mean I love I'm an artist. I yeah. love producers. I love quality music. And I only invite people that I feel like they're at that level, I'm mm. uh, for me, dog, you're the best producer in hip hop. Thank you. Can I get those boop 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 boop? Are you amazing, dog? Like, but are you aware of that though? I mean, I try my best to be. Uh, <clears throat> but you know, life has its way of interrupting because of just all the distractions and just you know the mm. necessary things that people go through on the day to day. But you know, having to align spiritually in jail and just getting yourself in jail aligned sort of reminds you, it's okay, cool, you're here to do something important. Because that's what I gravitate to. I always, whenever I speak to people, I tell them, Guti, my main passion is to give and to be of service. You get what I'm saying? But so, like you're a producer, dog. You've given so much. Yeah. And that, that, that inspires me even more to even give more and to even mm. do more. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Because that's when I'm at my most happiest and my most comfortable. Mm. You know? Hey, we got a lot to talk about today, Mpana, but Aish uh, Keenan. Mm. But let's talk about that later on. Mm. Uh, for now, um, I want the viewers to know a different side of you. I know they already know that you're a producer. Mm-hmm. But I'm sure most people, they don't even know like what you do on your free time. Like, are you always producing all the time? Mm. Like, what does Tweezy really like? Like, what do you do? Like, So, funny enough, I'm like a super big reader. Oh, like, yeah? Yeah, reading is a very big thing for me. You know, because... I'm I'm an open-minded person. I'm mm-hmm. very uh, inquisitive, if that's the word, curious. Mm-hmm. Especially just about life and what happens in here with just, like, just trying to make sense of this entire thing, you know? Mm. So I always gravitate into reading, watching podcasts and, you know, contents that people put together to just get as much information as possible. Mm. Yeah, but besides that, in here, just chilling in here with homies, family people mm. that you can have conversations with in a way that sort of supports uh, mm. making sense of what you're trying to do in Pilo Ayako and everything. Nah, that's dope, man. What kind of a space are you in right now? Is everything... Are you are you in a happy space? Spiritually? Um, are you still finding your higher self? Yeah, you... I think I'm still on the journey. I, uh-huh. I, I don't think I've gotten there, uh-huh. you know, because I feel like there's still, like, a lot of me yearning to discover more things. Uh-huh. I might say I'm enlightened to certain things, but I don't really know about them, like, 100%. Like, would you say, also with your music, are you still elevating, like? Um, yeah, because I don't think you could ever get to, mm. you know, mm. just with anything in life. But do, you, always... do you still have that hunger, like, that that drive in within the music space? Because, mm. dog, you've done, like, you've done so much, dog. I do... Uh, let me say my hunger switched. Mm-hmm. So I've transitioned from having the hunger of, you know, just 
you know, naturally as people, we sort of gravitate naturally to sort of serving ourselves and what we want in the sense of like the ego sense of things. It's okay. I want to be the goat. I want to be the greatest of all time. Blah, 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 blah. Mm. I think it's sort of switched from that now and it's more about, okay, cool. What can I do to sort of make a difference here? Mm. Like in this entire thing, because mm. one of my... Um, Wishes rather is you know what by the time I get out of here or whatever the case is wherever it is mm. that we're going, umfunu wuti niwa umuntu where it's like okay the konum chito also and mm-hmm. this is the difference that he made. However big the difference is, they made that difference. Okay. So, yeah. Talking about making a difference, do you know what I always used to tell my guys? I used to tell them that before Tweezy, we never used to have this level of production within the hip hop space. Mm. Uh, before, I'm, I'm not saying they were whack, mm. but uh, dog, you came in hard, dog. Yes, in <laughs> before we even get them, Fana, mm. I want to tell people who took a class my hit to a Okay, okay. <laughs> uh, it's on us, it's on us. <laughs> Are you guys ready? All right. Yo, dog, you got a whole lot of stuff, eh? Mm. Singles produced. Celebration by DJ Spinster featuring Boosie and Kidex. Mm-hmm. Ameni, Miss Prue. DJ featuring Fifi Cooper, MT, Benchmark, Aries, Saudi, and Java. Mm-hmm. Amen, amen. Who are you? Yeah, myself. Shout out to Raf, no lunatic as well. Oh, yeah? Uh, we did a collaboration. See by Trivel on the production. And then obviously, I'm an artist. Fifi Cooper, Aries, Benchmark, Java, Miss Pru. And there's Bongo Zaga by Rouge featuring Moosley. Yep. See Lucotini, Ricky Rick. Mm-hmm. Oh, my word. Shout out to Gemini Major and Ooh, Cocaine. Another collaboration. Yo, dog, Messi, DJ Sleek. Like, you've done so much for DJ Sleek, right? Yeah, we did an entire project together. Oh, yeah? Yeah. King by Nasty C featuring Ace of Fag. Mm-hmm. Amat Dimoni by Casper in your vest. Mm-hmm. Featuring Tweezy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dog. As in, guys, this guy produced Run Josie by AKA. Mm-hmm. He produced All Eyes on Me by AKA. Mm-hmm. He produced Sim Dope by AKA. Mm-hmm. Like, was that the first album that you worked with? Yeah, he levels. Uh. Mm. <sighs> I still pants. I'm sorry, guys. It's just that I'm excited. <laughs> I got tweezing. Yeah. I am. So, Doug, how did you start, like, within the music space? So... Take us through that journey, that whole suffering, that whole dreaming vibe and wanting mm. to be who you are today. Yeah, um, and this is going to be exciting this time around because the corner we and, and like, <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So, I mean, it starts obviously with a passion, you mm. know, um, uh, getting introduced to hip-hop at a young age, getting introduced to Ikwaito when I moved to Esoweto. I moved to Esoweto after the passing of my parents, Marco Okovele, one importer from Dubai, because that's where I was based. Mm-hmm. So got to Soweto, Soweto Vele, like there was this, you know, kind of like how it is with Ama Piano now, Luguti, like, you know, the kids gravitate to the sound and like when the artists come around, there's like this celebratory thing. Yeah. Like Siaba Chablela type thing. Yeah. That's how it was with Kwaito artists. With some Kwaito artists of Figa, La Pika, Siaba Chablele, a lot of bashes and everything. And that used to intrigue me, just from a young age. Oh, yeah? And for some reason, I would be singing Mandoza, Maga Luntuza, and Maga Shaya. Hey, Kwaito talk. You get what I'm saying? So I would get a young spoon in killing Bapi for me, Ling Shama Kwasa out there, Tainin. You know, um, fast forward, um, 2008, mm. I'm introduced to a software Fruit Loop Studio. Mm-hmm. Didn't really think much of it because, um, yeah, I had a passion for music, but I didn't really pursue making it. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? It was just a hobby, especially at that age where, you know, at all of and you're just doing things for the sake of just doing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, boy. And then I bump into... <laughs> yeah, well, I bump into E. Gordy uh, and uh, our Elistin, Vebe, yeah. you know, we start forming a clique through our own passions. And I think from that collaboration and that unity of us coming together, that's when there started to be a purpose behind the passion, where it was like, okay, cool, we, we need to do this thing working towards something rather than just doing it for you know yeah that's when we formed the group and we started recording the music putting it out there you get what i'm saying 
dog who on Metro or YFM. Channel O. My nigga. Shooting videos independently. Yeah. Hey, that was hard though. Yeah, and hey. Like what, what can you say you'd learnt about that journey before you became the god that you are right now? Um, when you were still on your way up, you know, trying to find your way. Yeah. Um, I think, okay, firstly, the power of collaboration. Mm-hmm. Because I think we take for granted um, not only how powerful and capable we are within our own gifts, but there's a certain... But when we come together, you know... Um, in Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, it's called The Power of Mastermind, okay. where people with similar mindsets and similar goals and everything come together. And yeah. there's like this thing called the sixth sense, which is like... Yeah, dog, you create this amazing synergy that, that that's so powerful, you know, because you guys are both going for the same thing. Exactly. Yeah. And now you find yourself when you would have been on your own and you don't really feel much inspired, but now Masi Kru, yeah. all these amazing ideas are just pouncing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I learned that, and the fact that if you ever get lost, it's as easy as just finding people who sort of resonate with you in the sense of energy. Ugutivele, you guys are on the same frequency lane, and you guys sort of, not only just a common goal, but like, you know. If I know up a dog. Yeah, and we have a vision, you yeah. yo, anything that we're coming up with. You know, and the belief and faith behind that. Mm. And then the second thing also is that um, you really sort of, there's this thing, but it's like life sort of brings us to our destiny by testing us. Vele, vele, what is it that you're about? So, okay, you're saying that you're an amazing musician and whatever the case is, show us, Sbonis, type yeah, thing. Yeah. And you go through a process of a chain of events where it brings out the best in you, even though we're not born, type yeah. thing. And it usually happens in situations where you feel like he's in Taslangani or things, you're experiencing failure, type thing. Because, mm. I mean, personally, every single time I've went through a moment where I feel like I'm experiencing failure. Mm. That's when I sort of brought out the best in myself. Yeah, I need to it's darkest before, like just before the dawn. In mm-hmm. where you know that hey, shit is about to get real. Mm. The most important thing is for you not to kind of give up. Because, hey, Koan in Tengku, there's a very, very lap from that struggle, dog. And I saw that through you, dog. I remember we used to. <laughs> dog, where is that red all star? <laughs> <laughs> ah. It's funny, I was telling my homies, dog, about that all star. Uh, for those that don't know, I used to have the all star red. And your face will all star by name, Bob. I'm a chance would be so embarrassed. Whenever we have to go to these instances, see, my YFM, see, all Yo. these places, I'm rocking this all star. And. <sighs> My thing was that, and I was so proud. I don't even know where I got that confidence. I was so proud. And anytime anyone would ask me, would say, dog, what's with this shoe? Wasn't I, it the same old you were wearing Slangana no AK? It was. Eh? It was. <laughs> in that situation, I had to finesse it. I don't want it. That, I think that was the one situation mm. where I was like, okay, cool. La, you can be proud about your, your, your shortcomings stake. or whatever. But la, na, mele ube. Yeah, well. So what? So what? Are you saying people should embrace that whole struggle? Like this, like there's something beautiful when you're struggling. Like don't care what people say when you are going through the struggle. Like unugi kwapa. Like okay, no, there's a difference between embracing your struggles and mm. like not really caring mm. about, and also uh, lacking respect for the environment, yourself, and other things. Yeah, well, mm. I think the difference with me, Nji, with the situation was that uh, instead of sort of um, being suppressed by my lack, I saw um, the potential of what could be, and I embraced that, and I was excited. Uguti, yo, one day I'll be able to tell the story, because consciously that was my thing. Mm. Uguti, yo, one day we'll have this conversation with Ali Ulster and I'll tell people, mm. Uguti, yo, I used to have fucked up Ulster. Do you know, Doug, you told me that. Mm. 
Uh? That's that's what I used to tell everyone. Even Nicholas when I was wearing the shoe and people would be like, I'm fine, I like that this shoe, bro. Mm. And I'd be like, nah, one day, I wish I had the And today the you're telling me again talk about this all-star. I guess the power of the tongue as well. You know, because Batum mm. And then that whole AKA thing, how did it come about? So... Uh, I know the story, I'm doing it for you guys. Yeah. <laughs> so, shout out to Umuzi. Uh, there's a very dope gentleman by the name of Umuzi. Um, uh, he was in the fraternity. You know, Ipega yeah. Minangetua. Uh, we, we used to look up to that group. I and remember. We used to be hey, they used to have dope videos. Finally, the videos were hey, clean. Hey, there's no budget. <laughs> <laughs> and the funniest thing is that they used to hustle very hard for that budget. Like, mm. when we have these convos, mm. now nah, they went through, similar to what we went through, oh, yeah. They were able to finesse it, you know. <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, like eventually, like we used to work and he used to ask for beats type mm -hmm. thing, about. Mm -hmm. And then sending him mama beats, he used to really, really, really believe in these beats, and he'd be like, "Yo, I'm fine. Like this quality, this is like international standard mm. type thing, and I can't believe this is just not only someone from Mzansi, but someone." Who's within our age group? Dog, I said like, before you blew up in the game, the hip hop production never had that sound, dog. Mm. I'm not saying they were whack. Mm -hmm. uh, but when you came in hard, dog. Yeah. Ah, but yeah, sorry, you can continue, dog. Yeah, so so that same thing. Now he saw that in me now, and he was mm. like, no ways. I feel like it's criminal that, you know, you're not inside the industry because you know how there's the whole inside the industry, outside the industry. Yeah. It's criminal that you're outside the industry and you've got this skill and talent and, mm. you know, standard of production. So, shot me number ga kineni, shot me number ga tido. And he was like, yo, there's not much I can do for you. All I can do is just give you these numbers. Ah, shout out to Muzi, dog. Shout out to Muzi. He's also my nigga, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I always tell him, dog, like, we still good till this day. We mm. chat. You know, and I always remind them, Guti, my nigga, like, please never forget the fact you Guti, Njoba Nila, and I'm who I am. Mm. You, you were the tunnel mm. for this thing to happen. You get what I'm saying? Mm. And as they say, the rest was history. Hey, I'm fan. Yeah. Ah, I'm fan. Ish, AKA. Yeah. It's sad, ne? It's crazy. It's unbelievable. Like for me personally, I, I, I was. I, when last I, did you speak to him? Um, in 2023. Mm -hmm. Um, late 2022. Late 2022. Yeah, because um, I mean things were good between us. But you are you are you part of Mass Country? No, I didn't get the opportunity to work on Mass Country. Uh. Um. Yeah, we had last spoken in like 2022. Okay. You know, and yeah, we were in talks of working again and everything. You know, mm. life just has a period where, you know, people sort of when when's a land or when when's a land or there's mm. nothing wrong and there's no beef yeah. or anything. You know, there's just different uh, journeys taking place in just Yo, dog, tell us about AKA dog from your experience in working with him. Like that mm. guy for me is the greatest dog. Yeah, but about the top 10 SA hip hop artists for me is number one. Mm hmm. And then in terms of points for number two, ah, uh, the gap is too much, dog. Mm, mm. That's that's me. That's me too. But just take us through your experience with him. Like, what kind of an artist was he? Like in studio, like your experience in working with him, dog. Um, I think we sort of all know what kind of an artist he is and the person that he is when he's under the AKA frame. Mm -hmm. You know, like the amazing artistry and just powerful. Uh, being that he was, um, I think as a person also, it was just as greater, you know? Like, the few people that have gotten to express how much I'm grateful for Uguti Nkhlanga Like, mm. I've, I've shared Uguti, like, you know, um, one of the most amazing things about Udog was that, you know, the amount of belief he had in people, you know, like, um, this is a story that not a lot of people know, um, the day I sent him some dope, right? Um, internet cafe, go late, and they like this was close to when the album was uh, gonna be done. And at that point, I said, I after line, I'm fit too. If it doesn't work out, I it's just run Josie and mm, mm. So I was frantic, just trying to send the beat through. 
came back, young Fonella, then he was like, yo, Mfeto, I need you to listen to me very carefully. This thing that you've got going on by this production thing and everything, this is a gift from God. And this thing is going to change lives, yours included. And I need you to respect this thing and to be comfortable with the fact you're good, okay, this is your destiny type thing. And, you know, as people, like, even though you know, Gutsu Yashi is something, Gusa Kona Lento Le Yoguti, I don't know about all that. And I think I speak for even other people, Gutsu. He was like, really did he dope. tell you that before? Like, you were known? Yeah. Mm. This is before, like, even before, levels mm. came out. No mm. one really knew who I was at that time. And then I'm sure at that time, dog, you were like, yes, I was right. Yeah, I was confused because, you know, into my end, it's like, okay, mm. this is really happening, dog. Like, this like, guy just told me I got a gift from God. getting your breakthrough through the biggest artist in the game. Bro. And it was a lot to take in, value when it was happening because... Half the time, it was, like, unbelievable. Like, yeah, it was just so unbelievable. Good to, yo, this thing is happening, and, you know... And I'm not a beat at that time, yo. And he's even telling you, dog. He's giving you, a, before even any song blows up, like, he, he already sees the greatness in you. Mm -hmm. And he's telling you that, Mvana, take this and run with it. Yeah, and I ran with it, dog. Like, yo... Mm. Because every single time, whenever I'd work, and my what I'm going through, my elements of just doubt or just whatever it is I'm going through, mm. I'd always remember, Guti, yo, someone really special told me, Guti, yo, I've got a gift, mm. and I need to respect and preserve this thing. Amazing. And that's exactly what I would do. So that was your breakthrough as Tweezy, the producer? Yeah. Okay. Just take us through that whole journey, dog, at that time, like... Were you, because I remember you were an artist as well. Mm -hmm. When did you switch up and decided to jump into the artistry of? I mean, well, you know, but I've always been an artist, mm. right? Mm. Um, it just so happens that I was a better producer, especially as far as how people received me and my energy and just skill and gift. You get what I'm saying? So I just figured, you know what? Let me just focus on production because it just seems like, okay, cool. I'm dope at rapping. I'm dope at making music. But there's just this... People are people just really resonate to my production. Okay, mm. let me just focus on this, see how far it takes me. Mm. And then, you know, I just parked being an artist for some time to just focus on being a producer. And then dog, you're a dope artist, dog. Mm -hmm. I've always known that you're a dope artist. Actually, I feel like you are also doper the same way as you're dope as a producer. Mm. It's just that when we see you first as a pastor, we can't even see you as a president. Yeah. We're going to always see you as a pastor. Yeah. Can't do Namibia, also, you can also lead us. You can also be a dope president. You yeah. Know? <laughs> yeah. You never know. Yeah. Okay, so, so which other artists like would you say these are the top artists that I've worked with and I've learned this, this and that from them. Like, who would you say besides AKA? Because I know you also worked with Ricky. Yeah, I mean, I've worked with a lot of people, dog. And, mm. um... You know I'll, what, let me rephrase my question. Okay. Give me your top five best produced Tweezy songs by Tweezy, guys. <laughs> hey, <laughs> let's go. Uh, ish, tough question. I love all my children. <laughs> ah. Um... Let's start from... Definitely. Uh huh. Um, it's such a hard question. Cause I'm wow. Uh, Are your favorite ones, dog? Come on. That's the thing. I Are love you telling all me my that children. from all your ex-girlfriends? I you about three over ten. What? Yeah, I'm not Yeah, but ex-girlfriends are not children. Not just telling them I hate them, dog. Ish, dog. Um. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm going to try my best not to think hard about this. Yeah. Let's say, okay, cool, sharp. Sim Dope. Mm -hmm. King. Mm -hmm. uh, All Eyes On Me. Mm -hmm. uh, Wamuhe, specifically because now I was transitioning from the whole... Which one is Wamuhe, by the way? The piano one? Yes, the wow. piano one by DJ Slade featuring Sinom Solo. Uh, also wow. had Yams. Wamuhe? Also. Yes, that one. Uh, uh, okay. Yeah, nice. you get me. Um, when did you jump into the piano space? That when we're making that song, because um, shout out to DJ Slade. Um, you know we've always been 
talking on the DMs and uh -huh. like you know he'd show me some love I'd show him some love as well and he, he would be adamant about us working type thing with him mm. I don't give a damn you're tweezy and whatever the case is you're dope in this hip hop space cool mm. I need you on Nayano's joint mm. I don't know about all that I whatever it is that you have to say piano joint and then eventually like we managed to make the time to just try the shit out and like piano quite is not far from each other dog so i wouldn't be surprised if you jump into my piano and music is music also yeah i mean you know that i make music overall yeah. right yeah so now corner that, that's the other thing that sort of encouraged me to do it because it was like okay cool um at the end of the day music is music so <clears throat> when it comes to hip-hop right now we're gonna get into my piano uh. Because, you know, I have this theory of, and it's not even a theory, but I feel like ever since Nasty and that MT era, uh -huh. we've never really had more artists to blow up at that level. Mm. Like how Nasty, MT and Aries, they blow up. Mm -hmm. Yes, we've had some couple of artists that came after them, like currently there's Maclera, right? Mm -hmm. But would you say he's at that level? I think the thing that makes it tricky right now, mm. especially in the hip hop space, Mm. is that not only just in hip hop but with other genres the momentum was 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 um sort of uh slowed down by the the meteor uh, what's it is mm. the rise of ama piano okay um and when ama piano ama piano affected hip hop yeah and i i think more than anything everyone was just so excited at this rebirth and having a new South African sound that we're all just so obsessed at this creation. You mm, get what I'm saying? Mm. So anything that sort of happened before that was sort of defaulted to not really getting the attention that it usually would. So mm -hmm. there was probably a lot of artists that could have um, blew up at the time and got in their, um, their star moment or whatever to call it. But... Because of Ipiano, it was like, yeah, you dope and everything, but yo, young stan, yo, Cetril, mm, yo, mm, Buche, eh, mm. all these superstars that we have in Yanos, and they deserve that shine too, but mm. we're just so focused on piano, which mm. is not a bad thing at all mm. for me. Okay, I feel you, I feel mm. you, I think you're right. Yo, because, hey, that affected hip hop negatively, dog. Mm. Amachi, Tamapo King. Yeah, but that was more COVID also. Mm, okay. Young toilet. COVID like, related, ne? Yeah. It affected also the the game as yeah. a whole. And piano, remember, well, according to how I see it, mm. the piano was able to survive based off the fact you Tell them for sale, dog. Yeah, you can continue. The pia piano, like, um, survived based off the fact you Guti. Ukumbulu Guti. Like, I'll make an example, not to compare the artists, but to sort of compare the kind of market, right? Mm, mm. Let's take someone like a AKA or a Casper, mm -hmm. and then we take someone like, I don't know, Ntuda, or I don't know, anyone from the piano space. Mm -hmm. These, actually, forget the people, but we piano. AKA and Casper, let's use Casper actually, because he filled up the dome and all these big venues. Yeah. It's very hard to bring Casper to a small venue now mm -hmm. because of also the power of his brand and how many people he can pull in. Mm -hmm. COVID now is marginalizing the business aspect of that because now it's like, ish, you know, I'm not going to go to um, a venue that's going to take 5,000 people and take maybe 25K for that when I, I do 20,000 and my rates to do this thing is... 200,000 or something like that and I guess there was a distortion in that especially at a time where people don't have money COVID is closing so many avenues mm. um, literally the only way to survive was to be able to go to pubs because that was the only open platform for entertainment Yeah, you can only go to the pub mm. and they don't have the money to spend on big time acts so as an act, now you have to be at a position where you're going to accept that whatever money that the pub can give to you and make that work. Let's mm. talk about you evolving into the music business. Because mm. I know you are now in A&R. Yeah. And you've been a producer, but now I feel like you are inside the music business. Mm. When did that 
switch up come like when when was that and what inspired that whole thing so i mean of course uh in ambitious ambitious entertainment right mm -hmm. um the relationship started uh at the foundation of the record label funny enough which was around about 2015 mm -hmm. yeah oh yeah you know uh, oh, shout out you, to my OG, with the uh, -huh. uh you know the ceo okay um we had a relationship just from inception where it started off as a relationship where it's like, okay, cool, I need beats for my artist, Nazingo, my tell me what you think. Mm -hmm. And then as we sort of grew, as far as our relationship, mm -hmm. uh, work, our working relationship, mm -hmm. it got to a point where I guess Naya, he saw in me um, the capability of just being able to understand music beyond just producing a beat and getting someone to record on a song. Mm. Because now we'd have conversations about, yo, uh, ideas for a music video type thing. Mm. Or what do you think is the next single? Analyzing mm. the market as far as what kind of sound is working out here and whatever the case mm. is. Then the official um, move for me to be an a &R happened in 2020. Mm -hmm. Where my OG was just like, I'm a young nigga, you know what? I mm. think you've sort of graduated just from us you know, sort of going back and forth with these ideas and everything mm -hmm. to us doing it professionally. Okay. So how do you feel about actually doing A&R for the label? And okay. I was more than pleased to take that role. Oh, yeah? And yeah. Amazing. Yo, so you were, before he told you about the A&R position, were you always in, like working closely with the artist that Ambitious, like throughout? Yeah, since Inse thingy, Inception. Okay. I mean, Fifi was the first artist I was there, mm -hmm. worked on E20. So you've produced for everybody there? Not absolutely everybody, uh -huh. uh, but majority. Because from where I was standing, I was thinking, hey, Tweezy must be producing for all the artists there. Because I know you as a producer. Yeah, <laughs> nah. Uh, and that's the thing about A&R, you know. Uh, uh. Uh, people shouldn't get to a point where they confuse... Um, being an a &R as being a person that, you know, creates the beats, makes the song, and, like, you know, you make the entire album and whatever. No, there's vision mm. behind it. Mm -hmm. And when you have vision, just like yourself, uh, whatever it is in the business that you do, you mm. don't have to be in the studio or to make the music. Mm -hmm. You can get the music being presented to you. Mm -hmm. And you can make the decisions necessary or have the conversations necessary that lead to the next step just based off the potential of this product. Because mm. we're looking at it as a product now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I don't have to create the product for me to know, to know that product is dope. Yeah. Or to suggest an input into the creation of the product. True. Type thing. True. Yeah. I, I, I love the fact that you, you call it a product. Because a lot of artists, you know, when they think of music, they think of being a celebrity. They don't mm. think about the business side of things, that they're actually creating a product mm. that needs to be sold. Mm. And this product is going to be sold for the next 100 years. Mm. Even yeah. long after they longer. Been gone, yeah. Like, a lot of people, they don't know, like, much about that. Mm. When were you awakened when it comes to the importance of monetizing music? I think... I think I've always had the idea. We've always had the idea. Yeah. Right? But... We just didn't know the actual, um, the industry chain of yeah, how things how actually to monetize, work, yeah. how to sort of, like, the money is being made, okay, the music is going out, the money is, but how is it actually happening? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Like, for instance, now in this digital age, um, the chain would be, which you've got the music, you're putting it into the DSPs. Once it gets to the DSPs, Ubuntu goes and buys it off Apple. Mm -hmm. Then through the DSPs, you get your money and then it pays you mm. via the master and the publishing as well. Yeah. Type thing. And also just the experiences that, that I've had just being in the industry where I'm not just working in the industry, I'm working in the business side of it. Mm. So I'm being introduced to split sheets. What the hell is a split sheet? Mm. This is what's going to make sure you get your publishing. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. What's publishing? Publishing is the money, you know. Mm. As time is going, you know, it's getting to a point where the industry is sort of opening itself up to me to educate me. Which, Yo, dog, it's not just about sitting in the studio mm -hmm. making the music. Mm. There's also the, the, the monetary gain yeah. And the business aspect behind it. Amster, are we good there, dog? Yeah, we're good. Are we nice? Yeah. Do we look like the gods? Oh, yeah? 
Okay, guys, the name of the show is called The Highest Frequency. I said it on my last episode for a reason. It's a double pun. <laughs> if you get it, you get it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. No, Doc, it's very important for these kids to know that the end goal is to make money from this music thing, not yeah. just to be a celebrity. Yeah. I think if they look at it that way, I think we could have, we could have different stories, like when an artist leaves this realm, where we're hearing stories that he, he was broke, like all those stories. We want stories where, like, where we hear that this guy sold his catalog for 20 million. Yeah. You like, know? for instance, what's happening with, with um, you know, how AKA's team is doing the things with Mass Country. Yeah. And they, like, there's a lot of people that are out there talking about, yo, like, we shouldn't be using his social media accounts and whatever the case is, not understanding the aspect, yo, okay, cool. There's a legacy behind uh, Umchita, right? Mm. And within this legacy, we're not using this account to just you know, be malicious and to do stupid things that are unnecessary. Oh, people now just want that account to be silent. And that doesn't make no sense. This yeah. is flipping super mega, dog. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Of course. A world superstar. His it energy, we dumb. can still feel his energy, dog. Hey, yeah. now nah, about Pop Smoke, I'm a, uh, I'm a account to doing the same thing about Juice World, about, mm. about Extentacion. And it's based off the legacy. Because at the end of the day, like you were saying, the music takes care of the families. It actually, you get what I'm saying? I and when you. it comes to legacy, you know, we all work to sort of be immortalized as far as the work that we do so that our it becomes generational wealth or generational legacy that's going to benefit our families. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So, yeah. yeah, like... What do you think about Mass Country? Have you listened to it? Beautiful album. Beautiful album, yeah? Beautiful album. Like, I like the vulnerability. Um, I mean, the skill is always there. Mm -hmm. as far as like the production the lyricism and whatever mm -hmm. but we also get a side of vulnerability from ukinen you know with him taking us through his experiences mm -hmm. in the best way that he can and you know i'm sure for a lot of people Vele, that really support him it's it's quite an emotional roller coaster you know mm -hmm. i know for me it's you know hey, i can imagine though. yeah i can only imagine yeah yo man so, in terms of um, AKA's albums, how many albums did he drop? Let's see, Alter Ego, Levels, Touch My Blood. We're counting Bovamania. Bovamania. Yeah, Bovamania. Um, Be careful what you wish for. Uh, you welcome with Costa, Mass Country. So, about seven. Mm. Mm. And from all the songs that you produce for him, mm. which one is your favorite? Just one. From the entire catalog. Yeah, that you produced for him. Just one song. Yeah. And tell us about that story. I love my children, man. <laughs> I love all my children. This dog. Um, I think between all eyes on me and some dope, just because of the sentimental mm -hmm. moments behind them. Okay. You know. Mm -hmm. Um. Some dope because obviously that's when you know Keenan brought me to the awakening of understanding my gift. Mm -hmm. um, all eyes on me, just based off the fact, Joe Guti, I'm realizing, um, oh, Guti, okay, shit, this is really happening now because mm. now you know we're, we're making the music cool, we're in the process, and then this guy is calling me and playing the song for me. And Burner Boy is on the hook, mm. and it's like you hear the hook, and yeah, one of the ways needs one calling all eyes on me, mm. and it's a hit. Imagine mm. now hearing that thing for the first time, and you're the person who was involved in creating that. Mm. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. It was crazy, bro. Hey, that was crazy. I man. cried, bro. Like, with your banner, okay, this is it. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? So, yeah. I guess for those sentimental reasons, mm. between those two songs. Hey, dude, I couldn't believe it when I heard Banner Boy on that intro when you played it for me the first time. Mm. I was like, Tweezy's a con boy. Yeah. Con, con, con. Ish, bro. With that Brenda Fassi sample. Dog. And you've always loved samples. Now, you, mm. like, why? Tell us about why you love sam like sampling stuff. Mm. Okay, one, because of the, just the cultural aspect of it. Mm -hmm. Hip-hop really is, is about recreation, sampling really comes from hip-hop. Yeah. Two, my influences, 
Kanye plays a big role. You know how much I fuck with Ye. Mm-hmm. Um, he samples almost everything. Mm-hmm. You know, number three, working in with Keenan especially because he was the foundation, obviously, of my production journey. Mm. So when I started working with him, he's also a person who's within, you know, he the elements sampling of well. sampling yeah. and whatever the case is. So. It's like in my growth of being a producer now and finding my sound, I'm still tapping into this sampling thing. So it's you know, almost like it chose me. You know, you're the one that you, you're the person that introduced me to Anita Becker. Really? Hey, you used to sing for a lot of Anita. That's Becker. That's my favorite vocalist of all time, bro. Ne? Like, hey. shout out to your old lady wherever she is. God bless her soul. Thank you for. All that music, bro. You know, the fire love song is gonna come out whenever Tweezy starts sampling. I want it to be. No, we're Teddy Pendergrass. Yeah. We also go to Ladas Yash. Yeah. Okay, and then for like, which which songs did you produce for MT? Um, MT. Uh, what did I do with MT? Corner Store, Plug, uh, Peaky Peaky on Avery mm-hmm. Five O. Mm-hmm. Um. What else? What's your take on Imbuzi as well? Imbuzi? MT. The oh, him? Uh. Dog, you know Imbuzi. Uh. Personally, also. Like, uh. you know, the thing about MT, dog, is that MT is special, bro. Mm. Like, I think I don't even have to describe it. I, I feel like as South Africa, as a nation, mm. we know how special MT is mm. as an artist. Mm. Mm. And it is indescribable. You know, you hear a song or you see him in the elements of him doing his thing, special. One of a kind, one of one type thing. And working with him also is just exactly that. Because, you know, being in that element and witnessing greatness taking place, mm. it's one of a kind. Uh, MT for me is top three, dog. Of all time? Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I understand that. Yeah, it's top yeah. three, dog. I don't know whether it's number two or number three after KO or before KO. <laughs> what do you think about my top three? Mfana, KO is arguably the, the, the greatest of all time. <laughs> I don't know whether the goat is between Keenan, KO, and Casper personally for me. Mm-hmm. I guess that's my holy grail three uh-huh. in no particular order. Mm. Like, yo, Mfana, yeah. I uh, know, KO is also hard with it. Uh, Especially with the consistency, bro. Guti, like, from, yeah, Kabango, Guti, okay. I mean, as a young nigga, I was introduced to a hot man a chance with Itia Gas and the group. Mm. And you go through this timeline of catalog and just moments, and then you get to set it. Mm. God damn. Hish. Come on, dog. From Ange. nowhere, Baba. Ange, I dog. think it's set. Hey, my young stand and play, also came in hard. Fucked up. Yo, all right, man, let's get back to you. So right now, where are we going with the Tweezy brand? What are you doing right now? What are you busy with? Um, <laughs> to be honest, I'm all over the place, dog. Mm. Um, because like I said, my passion is in serving, you know, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. contributing to something special, you know. Mm-hmm. I've always gravitated towards that, you know. I've always found inspiration with that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'm still in the studio cooking up. With my artist, uh, I've been playing around the Lokshin a lot, mm-hmm. you know, um, just eyeing on like new talent here so Lokshin, because I just believe with it. we don't really have the avenues and uh, channels to sort of get ourselves out there mm-hmm. and like the know how or maybe the resources rather. Okay. So, you know, just I'm um, out there looking, just seeing, okay, here's a young diamond in the rough, let me see. Mm. Like, I don't have a formula to the thing, you know? Okay. And then, yeah, still So right now it, you're yeah. all about giving back and opening up the industry as well? Pretty much. Okay. Yeah, opening up the industry is, is yeah, okay. a great title for that. And then yourself as a producer, are there any current projects that you're currently working on? Are we going to expect a tweet? Like, when are we going to get a Tweezy project, dog? You mean as an artist? Please, my guy, please do, do this one thing for me. Just get into studio. Uh produce and write music and record yourself a full EP mm. and never ever think about whatever anyone is going to say about it just do that for me just do it for me okay I know you're going to be doing it for yourself but trust me that shit is going to work out mm. we will believe everyone is going to believe my nigga 
Nabinendaba, just do you, Machi. Yeah. Can we please get a Tweezy album or an EP <laughs> or something? Okay. Um, I guess that's not in the future plans. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I guess that's in the future plans. Like, dog, you're dope. Do you know that, like, as an artist? Yeah, I, I think I get so consumed Mamela in dog, Lento, Ishong, Thomas Aquinas. I don't care who the fuck says whatever. Yeah. I think I can say this. You're dope as an artist. I mean, you're the one that said I'm dope as a producer before anyone even knew that, so... Hey, because, fine, you are dope, dog. You are that god. You can literally create amazing things. Mm. Imagine what type, like, what kind of music you would actually create if you were to get into that space and tell yourself that I'm creating my music now. No. Yeah. I'm sure it would be fire. You know, I can... <laughs> I get you, I get you. <laughs> please, my boy, please do no, that No, I hear me. you, dog. I think... And, and I hope that's part of the plans. I think also, just with me, like, I'm just so consumed with, you know, being there, like, being of service, like, mm. you know, doing things for other people that, mm. you know, undeservingly so, maybe, mm -hmm. I neglect sort of serving myself. Mm. Or serving what it is that I need to do, mm. you know, maybe because I think Guti, there's a lot of ego or self aggrandizement that happens with that, mm. you know. But you know, in the sense of, because to be honest with you, my nigga, you're not the only one that's having this convo, Guti or bro. We need to, you know, I get people Jay, that come through and say, bro, just one project, even Jay. Just yeah, just one. The and let it out. Yeah, I don't. And you're also an amazing songwriter. Do you know that? Well, the last time yeah, I was well, in studio with you, you were fucking an amazing songwriter. Mm, mm. And I'm sure right now you're on other vibes as well. Like, yeah, you, man. Have you wrote for other artists like lately? Uh, like where you know that I wrote that. You know what I do? Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's considered songwriting. Mm -hmm. Oguti, like you get into so in the process as a studio mm -hmm. umchita is working on the music because mm -hmm. that's what i do gakulu also is an a and r mm -hmm. if the producer's there yo my nigga let's add a piano let's give it this melody ba -ba 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 -ba. Mm. then even in the songwriting aspect yo instead of saying this how about a you mm. get what i'm saying mm. back to the power of collaboration because yeah. the more we working on a product together and we're putting all these ideas if something doesn't work we don't attach to it with ego mm. we just get rid of it yeah, yeah. And then if it really works, we've got a room of, let's say, the six people. I'm hey, a she Hey, I'm fine with Tole Zin, I'm fine with, like, three producers in one space. Mm. Hey, it's not quality with each other. But they don't openly say it out loud. Like, mm. let me work, let me work, we Like, we should be open about it. Like, as you're saying, the power of collaboration. Yeah, detaching from the ego, because, yeah. I mean, to my experience, um, and the funny thing is that in the industry, mm. I'm a producer dog. I don't mm. know with my piano and all the other things, but in hip hop, dog, mm. there's literally like a synergy mm. with producers. I don't know. We've never discussed this. Like, you know, I can hit up Luna right now and just, yo, what are you doing? Nothing. All right, let's go and cook. Cook. Mm. You know, mm. decide to go see Mash or go see whoever the case is. Mm. Because it, we, I don't know. We just gravitate towards the idea of knowing it's okay. This thing has nothing to do with ego. Mm. We're creating something that is gonna be that's gonna gravitate to Abba and to that are gonna listen to this and love it. And you know, eating from it is an extra advantage. Also, I will say it, my nigga. Well say it. I hope my man and my yeah, my producer out there. I hope they really understand that. At the end of the day, gents, like mm. we're creating a product that we all benefit but from. But I think the Mapiano guys they got it right because I always see on an artwork like five names, Baba. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But Thanks. there's only one guy singing there. Yeah. And and then that's when you know that maybe it's a collaborative effort. And, and that's why the music also just mm. slaps so hard because mm. now you're in a room where even you know now for you sure. are a tabo and you just edit a guitar. Can we put your name on the song? Featuring tab. Featuring tab. Yeah, and mm. I dig that, bro. Mm. Yeah. Amazing, amazing. No, dog. Thank you for pulling up, my G. Mm -hmm. This was fucking beautiful. I enjoyed this show, guys. Yeah, yeah. Um. When you can tell us whatever that you want to tell us, I always give my guys an opportunity to to kind of tell us that they got this Sebangena. That's how we end it on a positive vibe from now on. Young Tola, Spachen. Yo, first things first. Um, 
Mbongi support yeah, everyone, but fears who like uh, I think we take for granted mm. um, the role that support plays, especially mm. for us that are creating these things and we're doing these things. Because you know why I'm doing this. I want to get everybody to vibrate at the highest frequency. Mm. Until we mm. we want to make the unconscious conscious. Yeah. Until yeah. As you were saying, dog, the power of collaboration, all those things. You mm -hmm. guys are hearing from trees. Yeah. The best produce. How many hours do you have, dog? Counting like even the songs that are produced and yeah, stuff. Yeah, everything. Top. Ah. <sighs> yeah, not to post, but in fact, like I can't count. No, obviously, like <laughs> <laughs> to a point where, dog, like in I don't even have mm. all those things. Mm. You get what I'm saying? What do you mean? What I mean is. There's so many of the awards. Some haven't been claimed. Oh. Some, you get what I'm saying? Oh, like in physical copies. Yeah, because now I have to go to... Ah, like, well, now you're a certified multi-platinum. Not to brag. Uh. Like, when they have those awards and whatever, yeah. I can do the same thing. Yeah. But now, like, I'm just not really focused <laughs> on... It. Yeah, well, <laughs> but I, I'm not really, like, that doesn't really mean shit. To, mm. Like, I appreciate the recognition, of course, and I mm. understand what it means. Mm. But it's like, okay, cool. Like, there's more important things. Like, mm. serving people to vibrate higher on a frequency and mm. inspiring them to be like me one day. Mm. So you're starting to sound like yeah right now. Mm. <laughs> Ever fail to make petty tweezy? Do me a lot and go to the table. And just as I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, but boy, I'm not a dog. I'm a rancor, so boy, a dog. Family recognize family. Thank you for pulling up my G. Yeah. Highest frequency podcast we are here. Hmm. My daughter, I hope.